Hello everybody, my name is Skip Cypress and I'd like to welcome you to my personal garage. Shall we go on in? This is a garage made up of all the different cars that I found interest in over my car collecting and enjoying the automobiles and collectibles along with a lot of uh, petroleum uh, vintage paraphernalia, neon signs, gas pumps. Uh, you know, a favorite car, you can't say that because if I said it right here, it would hurt someone's feelings. <laughs> so. Um, I, your favorite car, it depends on the moment and where you are. And with cars, you know, everybody has to realize every manufacturer, there was a certain time that they were king. So you had, uh, depending upon the year and, and what was going on in life, whether it was Econobox, whether it was performance, whether it was luxury, there was an automaker. And at one point in time, they were king. And those are the kind of cars that I like to collect. This is a 1967 De Tomaso and It's one of 53 units made. It was the beginning of De Tomaso's um, uh, uh, production to get into the uh, marketing cars for the public. And uh, it's the predecessor to what we know today as the Pantera the Mongusta. Um, the under the, the the it's a mid-engine car so in the front is your fuel tank and in your rear is your motor it's a uh, 1600 cc Ford Cortina motor and it has uh, a, a body and curb weight of a, just over 1500 pounds we can grab a set of keys out of that. It's completely stock. Well, how do you say stock? It was for racing, right? They're all It's perfect, you know, if you're driving and you have a motor access right there, you can just turn around and adjust your carbs while you're going down the track. Yes. And it got those big old webbers and it, it's always coughing up a on uh, especially when you're on the on uh on the back the the backlash you'll you'll spark out a ton of flames out of the back and people will tell you, Hey, something's wrong with your car. It shoots the flames out the back on backfires. Want to get it from this side? Gear. Body by gear. It's it's a fiberglass body. We can fire it up later.
So I, I once had uh, a, a tremendous amount of uh, gas pumps compared to now. And the gas pumps that we collect are a clock face. So if you'll notice the way what makes a clock face is the dial, like a clock. And the clock faces were built uh, from the turn of the 19th century until about 19, uh, right around 1940. And then we went to what's called the computer faces. And the computer faces were when you had the dial that uh, would, the, like the little, the little dials that would go around. And what makes a clock face really interesting is the clock faces, why they're collectible is because most of them got melted down. And when we went to war in 1942, we needed steel for the ships and for, uh, for weapons and, and bullets and arms. So these things are all solid cast. Oh, wow. So the military and the, and the government mandated that all these pumps get um, uh, collected and they melted them down and they replaced them with the tin computer face mm -hmm. pumps. Um, anywhere from 350 to 700 pounds, depending upon the pump. And there, there's different, uh, and there's, there's different um, ages and um, some are the predecessors, the really early ones, are all cast. And these, one, these two you're looking at here have a little bit of uh, uh, sheet metal, lightweight tin to them, and mixed with the cast as they were already evolving into a cheaper uh, way to manufacture. The, the before the the um, clock face was a um, in production. The I have a couple of uh, they're called visibles, where the glass. If you come on over, the the glass case all the fuel would be in the glass case, and it would have numbers on it. And that represents the gallons. Mm -hmm. So what you would do is you would just take the, and your Model A or Model T, and you would open the valve and you let the fuel go down to, they would just kind of eyeball and estimate it and say, okay, you've used a gallon and a quarter and yeah. they'd charge you based on that. So there's a couple. So this is, these are the predecessors to the, the clock faces. Uh, this would be a um, early uh, 19, right on the button, 1900, 1910, somewhere in there. It was uh, on the side, you had like a pump, so you would have to pump it. So it was, not, it was a non-pressurized pump to get the fuel up to it. When we got to some of the later clock faces in the, in the 20s and in the 30s, we started having uh, fuel pressure or uh, pumps that would pump it up. So then your nozzles, you would have a nozzle that would open. Yeah. So um, uh, the, the dog and sud sign on the top of the, uh, the bar area, it actually rotates with a switch and it has, it's a real sign front and back. There's no reproduction to it. It's, uh, the dog and sud story was pretty interesting. It was, uh, it was a, a, a hot dog uh, stand in the Midwest and the South and they were using Goofy as their character and, and Disney went along and decided that, hey you can't do that and they got into a lawsuit and then once the it was actually really big big news in the media people would back then didn't have TV you turn on the radio and they would listen uh, and the, the broadcasters say would talk about the big lawsuit between Disney and Dog and Suds and the Dog and Suds uh, owner says they're never taking that down and that's not goofy they don't have the rights to it and 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 then the Disney head of Disney would get on and say we're gonna sue them and take everything they've got and the lawsuit went back and forth for a while and then eventually Disney prevailed and that was the end of Dog and Suds so making that a famous side the the Cadillac sign there's a 
Cadillac Hotel above Niagara Falls in, in, the, in the Canadian side. Mm -hmm. And that's the actual sign off of off the motel. It's a double-sided sign. The other, the signs, it's just against the wall. Uh, at first, you search them out, and then after uh, everyone gets word that you're looking for them, they start finding you, and then you have to start hiding from everyone because <laughs> everyone wants to sell you a sign. But I like interesting because I have a lot of Cadillacs. Um, I just thought, hey, it's kind of neat with having a, a crest, the Cadillac crest on there. Yeah. It was an interesting sign, something different than just. Mm. Um, uh, the European cars. I found that the the uh, uh, for me, I began with uh, American Muscle when I was a kid in high school, and my my very first cars that red Camaro up there on the rack. That was my actual first car. You no, know, I've had it all this time. It's been restored 14 times. Oh, wow. It has no financial significance oh. other than it's just uh, uh, just a personal thing. It means more to me than, it's, than it'll ever be worth. Uh, it'll, well, you can tell if it's up there, that means that it's been, it's been sitting for a bit. I haven't had it out probably in a year or so but uh there's uh, i have a uh quite a bit of muscle still not not in this warehouse mm -hmm. but uh that's a, the the car next to it is a is a uh, a really rare nova that with an l78 and it's a documented car um and there's a couple of mopars that are missing from here and currently there's a 53 corvette a 56 Corvette over on the rack, on the table behind us, and a 59 down the way, and, and a 63. And it's about the end of the muscle. You know, for me, I, I found that uh, the fatter I got, it became easier to drive a bigger car than, uh, than try to lose the weight. So I became, uh, more, I became more interested in the glamour cars, which are the big luxury performers. And then as uh, time has uh, progress. I found that I like to drive cars a lot more, and you can't really take a big luxury liner on a on a three or four hundred mile drive for a day, yeah. and I really enjoy doing that. Uh, I was uh, seventeen. I bought it in California. It was brown when I got it, and uh, it had. Uh, it wasn't wasn't very attractive, but I wanted a, a super sport, and it, it was the beginning, you know. Uh, and it got me to got me to high school and back. Well, when I say that, I mean it's it, I've, I've I've had it apart a bunch of times because there's always something better. Um, if I knew we we're going to speak about that, I would get it down for you guys, um, which we could if you wanted to. Um, the the it's a it's an L78 motor in that also, but it didn't begin life that way. Uh, it was, it's just a really uh, neat car. And I just kept it because I thought, you know, it's worth more to me than anyone else. So why, why part with it, you know? Absolutely not. Actually, I, that, that car uh, went down old San Fernando road many times. Uh, that, that was when, uh, that was the old San Fernando road. We used to go down there and we'd race on late, um, it was like late Thursday nights yeah. and the weekends, and then when the carjacking started in the back in the 80s, yeah. you know, the that was you had to, that stuff all came to an end because yeah. guys were losing cars. That's an Alpha F12. Uh, um, very interesting. It'd be a great car to pull down and do uh, do a shoot on it. Mm -hmm. So that is set up as a um, auto delta, uh, delta mm -hmm. which would be like the AMG for Mercedes, but for Alpha. And it has a motor actually sitting in the in the uh, the back of it, a spare motor. And yeah. it's a it's it says in, in Italian special client services mm -hmm. along the side of it. And what it does is it would have been the the car on the track that would support the race teams with whatever they needed when they were running the, the, on the racetracks. Cool. 
I recorded that about a year and a half ago. I, I saw it on the internet. Some guy in uh, Australia had it. And so I, I actually Instagram, I found him. And oh. so I messaged him. I said, that's the most oddest van I've ever seen. And I inquired about it. And he said he had taken a picture of it, but he knew the guy had it. And I said, hey, would, it, would he be interested in selling it? And yeah. next thing I know, it was on a boat on the way over here. <laughs> yes. Yeah, somebody had restored it, but the uh, it's restored to the way it would have been there. Uh, more of a purist restored it, so they didn't get all the bumps and waves out of it like you know, like like I might have liked to. But he was using it more. Um, uh, he had a lot of motorcycle. Uh, he was using more of a motorcycle support. And then the tractor, because everyone should have a tractor. You never know when you have to, yeah. you know, do the front, the front lawn. Absolutely. Yeah, well, we could drive that thing. Yeah, I like when the cars aren't in the center. I drive, I'll drive it around the inside of the warehouse. And I'll loop the place. It's a, uh, it's diesel. It's a single cylinder diesel motor. And if anyone went to uh, Rensport up in Monterey. Uh, the year before last, um, they had a tractor race, and it was, and I, I saw that, and I go, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And I think everybody ran home and said, where can I find one of those tractors? And uh, this is the Junior. Okay. Um, I don't know what its horsepower is, but I know it's got enough torque to put you through a block wall. You know, if you try to stop the thing when it's running. Big old ugly thing is uh, this is a, a 28,000 mile original. Uh, um, uh, there, it's, it's called a bicentennial. There was 200 of them made. They were the last 200 convertible 
Cadillacs made in 1976, mm -hmm. and uh, they're in the registry and they're bicentennials. This is a 29,000 original mile car, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, the, the paint's been spotted okay. in some spots because the there's a lot of plastic parts they put on them, yeah. and the plastic parts on the front around the bumpers and stuff will tend to start to uh, mold. So, yeah. but um, but you can see when you open open it up, that's that's all original in there. These cars are so cool and so awesome to drive until somebody sees you driving it and they go, what is that? But they, they, you can't believe how well these handle. They, yeah. they handle fantastic and they're, com they're comfy and cozy as can be. Big 400 cubic inch motor with about uh, 75 horsepower. Actually, I think it's about 160 horsepower, but and when you step on the gas, the little teeny uh, the little teeny exhaust pipes, all you hear is the wind just <laughs> you know, trying, to, trying to escape through it. So the, the orange Porsche was, uh, I built uh, to do rallies in. Um, th this is a, it's a 71 T that we took all the way down to the body and then we cut it, we made it a mimic more of a 73 an rs and the reason i put a stripe down the center because i just didn't want to have everybody going hey is that a rs i go let's just no one with an no one in the right mind would put a stripe down a real rs so i just made this as a fun car and it's it's got you know it has everything that you would want to um uh as far as comfort driving and suspension and, but it's pretty pretty correct and dead on and what a great car. Well, we got canceled for the Copper State because it was set up for that. And the, the black Porsche back there in the end was doing the California Melee and it got canceled. And this is, this is the, 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 the year for uh, canceled rallies. We have um, this, this 911 behind you did the, I did the, um, uh, a mountain melee in Virginia last year in this car. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a 73 CIS um, car, which was the in mid 73, they came out with a fuel injected mm -hmm. CIS motor. And it's, uh, this car is a really neat car. I bought this from an original owner and, uh, and, I, and it was in fantastic condition. And I, but I still wanted to restore it from scratch and make it just the way I like my cars. Yes, it's a signal yellow with a tan interior. It's odd. You know, I, I, at first I would have preferred maybe a black interior, mm -hmm. but the more I've gotten used to it, the more I like it. And on the on the quarter window, I've got the uh, the back of the dragon where I did the. It's a hundred. Or it's a, like a hundred and eighty switchbacks in twenty miles. Yeah. yeah. The the Datsun is uh, a car that when I was a kid. Um, that was everybody's hand-me-down so your friends all drove one and it didn't really occur to me as much uh, when I was younger as when I got older I realized hey you know what these cars had so much significance it was the beginning of Japan entering into the racing uh, circuits mm -hmm. and uh, fun fact Paul Newman uh, started out in a and a Datsun. So this is a Datsun 2000, and and it um, it it's the uh, successor. They started out as a um, um, they were called a Fair Lady, a 1600 Fair Lady. I'll give it a shove out. And it, if you look at the styling on it, you know, for the, 
for the amount of money that these things ran. So the, these had the ability, in 1967 and a half, they had come out with these, the 2000. They changed the name from Fair Lady to just 2000. And it be, has 135 horsepower and it has the ability of a 7,000, uh, that's, and that's all uh, original. It's stock. There's nothing modified, and that's the way they came. Notice how they say Nissan on the top of the valve cover? When I got the car, I said, what the heck is this? Like aftermarket parts, what is this Nissan? Well, Nissan didn't want to use the name Datsun be because it didn't sound, you know, trying to enter the American market. So they came up with Datsun. And so, but there's, they were always Nissan. Yeah. And then I think around 84, 85, they actually changed the the corporate name in America to to Nissan, back to Nissan. But this car as this is a 1968, and in 1968, um, in 67 and a half came the 2000 series motor. Everything except for the wheels on this car are stock. This is a stock car. This is the way it would have, they would have come. Um, it had 140 mile an hour capability. These, these were little rocket ships for what they are. But if you just look at the car, I, over, over time, I remember you always see like red ones, you know, and, and uh, in this car I, I bought from a guy in, um, in Nebraska and he had done all the, the bottom is all powder coated, the chassis, everything is just done so beautifully and he just never finished the final detail. So when I got it, I, I, I finished the, the little details that, where he stopped and I just, um, love driving this thing you get in this car and you're just like i can't believe in 1968 you, you know have a five speed the comfort and the handling in this car is, is unreal it's I, I don't know some silver the theme to this collection is it's a driving collection it it's just everything you has to get in and you got to be able to drive it you know and 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 if it, if i can't drive it you know it, it's what do you have it for i mean there's some stuff that that doesn't allow you to drive because of of uh, legalities and road conditions and there's also some of the older cars are um are, are unable to drive because uh they just can't they can't keep up with stoplights and uh, or be able to stop as fast as a stoplight might um so uh, you know a car that drives with today's roads or or what's what's pretty important so the if this car beginning a galaxy it's a 1961 sunliner and i consider this a luxury performance car uh convertible Looks cozy. Uh, you don't expect some kind of uh, high performance, anything under the hood. And then you look under the hood and there sits a Tri-Power 390 big block, ready to roll. <sighs> don't know. Probably, um, probably in the mid upper threes, but the torque on it would be pretty high. But it's, a, it's just an awesome freeway flyer. Yes. Yeah. It's the original, original car. It's had some slight modifications. I, I put a little bit big, wider tire in the back. But these big old um, luxury liners, you get them on the freeway and they've got pretty tall gears on them and it's pretty nice. They just get rolling down there and they cruise. Yeah, you know, the, I noticed that. I try to kind of sp split the cars up so we don't have too many black ones. But when I'm, 
sometimes when I'm restoring a car and I tend to always, uh, I'm attracted to the black car and, or if I'm picking a color to put on a car that doesn't have a, maybe an attractive color, I always refer to my black as my default color. If, if I can't find the right color, then paint it black. But these are, these, the special cars are black. They were born that way. Um, I, I searched them out. This is a 56 Corvette. In 55, uh, they came out with the General Motors with the 265 motor, which is the first big block. So uh, this is really the first sports car, in my mind, that General Motors had come out with where they'd finally gotten some horsepower from the straight sixes that the earlier Corvettes had. And this car is an interesting car. It's an automatic power top and a dual quad, which is uh, pretty, pretty cool. But in 56 and 55, you had the single uh, four barrel and 56, you got the dual quad. So I kind of consider this as the beginning of when uh, when General Motors cars became more more of a sports car, and then hence the queen of their prom for the Corvette and the entry level would have been the 57 Fuelie.